Hello. Good evening. Um, as you can tell by the shirt and tie that I'm still wearing from the last time I did a presentation, I'm Jack from uh, British Airways. And uh, good evening. I'm, I'm Peter Vich um, from the Bio Agency. Um, don't make us a mistake for us being the DJs. That's, uh, I think it's just after us. Um, we're going to talk to you, hopefully, um, about the transformation journey we're going through um, with British Airways and try and share some of our learnings and insights and, and what's worked and what hasn't worked. Um, you know, I think we all know how important transforming around the customer experience is today. From the business, driving more loyalty, having happier customers, increasing more revenue. You know, and from a customer's point of view, when things don't work, it's just flicking and annoying. So you know, it's our mission to do that. Um, you all know who British Airways is, but perhaps you don't all know who Bio is. Um, so just, just to explain what we do, um, so we only do digital change. We're an innovation transformation business. That's what we specialize in. We look at the whole organization, so not about really about marketing. What's the service? What's the product? And how do we make the change digitally to improve the experience? And we do it for a bunch of people. Um, we make a point about not being sector focused because we believe fresh thinking is the answer. Um, and so we try and take teams, they work on a banking client, they, we put it on to a, a travel client, for example. So today it's about British Airways and I guess the, the journey. So we, um, this is Alex, who's our CEO. You might have seen him on telly. Um, he's a uh, very passionate guy, great guy actually, and super, super into digital. In fact, he's got a little um, caricature thing in his office that's got, it's a robot that's talking to a caricature of him. You've seen it, right? That says, and the robot's saying to um, Alex, so you think you know digital? He's, you know, he's really, really into this stuff, super, super passionate. And he's been in the business in British Airways for about a year, just over a year. And he kind of walked in and he went, this is a very, very traditional business, like super, super analog, I guess. And he wanted to change it. And he was look, kind of looking at everything, even down to how we went about engaging with people like Peter. So, you know, typically it would be a six month, 300 step process to procure a, a supplier to do some work with us. And he was like, absolutely not. We're not doing that. We need to do, you know, if we want to think digitally, we need to do everything digitally. You know, we need to kind of be totally disruptive. So, so none of that. We're going to have a very, very different approach. And the key really was that he wanted to be kind of drive innovation. So what, what he, he did actually was he said, right, I want four suppliers and I want them into a room not quite as trendy as this, but you know, quite a large room. And he said, right, guys. Um, you are going to pitch. And he called it Be a Dragon, you know, as, as in Dragon's Den. Um, and he said, come in, tell me how you can make the world better. It was kind of as simple as that, really. I can't imagine what it was like for people like Peter having to do that, because he literally invited everybody from the whole business into this auditorium. He said, come on, you come and see how these guys can make us digital. Um, and really about driving that that concept of disruption, not this kind of bureaucratic, very process-driven world, but much more about being leaner and faster and more agile in how we do things. And then he said, start Monday. Yeah, I mean, the, um, the pitch process, um, pitching to 200 people in the auditorium was pretty intense. Um, we had 15 minutes to convey our strategy, our ideas, our thinking, and how are we going to do it? That was pretty intense. Um, and then we had to start, I think it was a Wednesday, we had to start full teams on the ground on Monday. That was really intense. Um, but that's how he wanted to do it. He wanted to be disruptive and change the way the organization behaved. So we needed to understand more about British Airways and where they were in the industry um, and where they sat in verticals. And actually, the first bit of insight was quite good for us that when you compared BA to budget airlines or other premium airlines, customers felt that most of the time they're meeting their needs. So that's good, right? So when we think about transformation, we think about what's the customer's needs, what not being met, how do we need to change? However, when we looked out, when we looked out of um, the sector into other verticals, 
banks performed better than airlines. Like, I appreciate Santander's doing an amazing job, but generally that is really bad news. I mean, they were just above the train lines, okay? So we knew we had a major, major problem. So that meant the team spent a lot of time understanding what customers really wanted and endless focus groups and spending time with them. And they told us a lot of things we know. They moaned a lot to us. But generally speaking, and this was all customers, they wanted three main things. They wanted the service to be relevant to, relevant to them. So this was not about personalization. This was not about personalization. It was not about saying, hi, Jack. It was understanding me in the moment I'm in. So am I a business traveler? Am I on my business journey? Or am I the same person with my family? Give me relevant service messages. Help me in the airport. Understand when I want to lounge and when I don't want to lounge. That was a big thing we felt we could impact through innovation. Secondly, they wanted to find out first. They wanted a proactive approach. They wanted to hear it from the airline rather than from the airport staff or from a third party app. If a plane's going to be delayed, they'd really like to know that it may be delayed even if it's not 100% delayed. That's information they wanted straight from the brands. And lastly, they wanted to be in control. So if there was a problem or they did need to cancel their flight, do it via the click of an application or via the site. Don't call anybody. That's really, really important. We had to empower the travelers. So we ended up with three key ingredients for making this a success. First of all, make this thing always on and taps into the customer's needs to so be predictive to them, okay, as explained in the previous. The experience design framework for us is to make sure that I can start on the app, end on the site, end on a watch, no matter what, let it flow seamlessly. That was a really important thing we need to crack. And lastly, build trust and transparency. And these three ingredients, I think, are relevant for British Airways, but also for other brands when you think about transformation. So this is our only one build. Um, a lot of the time, you think about things being usable and reliable, and that has to, has to happen. And convenient, it's there when you need it, great. But actually, what we strive to do was do things that really made a difference to travelers' life and be personable and meaningful. Okay. And, and that, that's quite difficult, actually, because a lot of the time, you're fighting with challenging to make things convenient and always on. So the that's all great, but the challenge is you've got a business that's got a, like literally a million things that it wants to do and loads and loads of initiatives and a kind of a real desire at the same time to... Um, I, well, I'll, t I'll tell you how I, I, I talk about it. So I, I don't know if you guys know the in-betweeners, but I'm a big fan. Yeah, and there's... There's a car in the in-between us. It's a yellow um, Fiat Cinquecento, and it's a bit beaten up. In fact, it's lost a door, and it's lost its bonnet. And actually, what the, uh, what the business wanted to do was to put a nice big spoiler on it and you know, some lights underneath it, you know, pimp, pimp the ride. They wanted to go straight to super innovation. And I'm going, guys, what we really need to do is a bit of a respray, you know, make the thing look like a one car rather than two or three cars, maybe put some new tires on it, you know, just get the thing working. That said, we can't afford not to be driving innovation. We need to be really, really pushing ourselves forward. So we, we work really closely with the bio guys. We, spend, we brought literally guys from all across the business to, um, into, a, into workshops, um, and we really started to plot out where we wanted to go. And you plot out on something, you know, it's a team app, right? We spent time working out what, what we wanted to be when it came to digital, you know, really defining what our vision was. And you can read it up there for yourself, but it's, you know, seamlessness, stress-free, um, really important to deliver a great experience when you're flying. And then we started to build out through, right, let's just stabilize what we've got then we can drive brilliance, and then we can differentiate. You know, there's no point being unique if somebody can't get onto a plane and get to their destination. We really wanted to drive that core experience first, and then we can start to, to really add and layer onto that and drive that kind of what I think hope will end up being a beautiful experience. And the app's been the kind of area where we've focused on a lot in that domain. So the first part was... Um, just 
quite simply, and it's going to sound ridiculous, but the app was crashing for loads of people. Um, so some people on older versions of iOS were finding that the app was, you know, they'd load it up, it would crash. So why would we do anything whilst, you know, probably about 10% of our customers couldn't use the app? Let's just fix it. So that was the first thing we do. It sounds, I mean, it's not very trendy. It's not very kind of digital in the inverted commas, but it's kind of important for our customers just to be able to do what they needed to do well. Then we did something around um, baggage credit. So you know, if, you, if your bag doesn't, get, doesn't arrive at your destination, unfortunately, it does happen, um, then can we give you some credits? And this is a really interesting one for me, because actually, this is a business, again, really traditionally used to you know, big business case, nine months cycle of funding requests. Failure is not an option. And actually, we, we banged this out really quickly. And we didn't spend a long time asking people permission. And you know what? Technically, it worked. Commercially, it didn't work. So we got it out to pilot, and then we pulled it, really driving that cultural change around it's OK to get things out there. And if, it's not, if it doesn't work, we'll, we'll try something else. Cancel and rebook, again, this is core. You know, Flights do get canceled. Let's allow customers to rebook themselves. So we're talking about, you know, this isn't stabilization in a, we need to fix things that are broken necessarily. It's giving customers that core experience in a really good way. And then we've added on timeline. Timeline to me is going to be the most exciting thing for us. I mean, if you think about a journey for our customers, it starts from um, the intent to purchase, and they they literally go on a journey with us. You know, they end up getting on a plane, they travel, they go somewhere else, they come back with us. Timeline, which I think we're going to show a video in a minute, yep. um, helps you go on that journey. I mean, it literally takes you all the way through. Um, super exciting, and it will lay the foundation for how our app works. Now, this, that's just a kind of view of the app. And we're doing this for all of our channels. There's about, I think, 75 different initiatives that are going on across this model. Um, and that kind of takes us all the way through. Okay. Um, with a bit of luck, we can play the video. British Airways wanted to put customers first. So we're putting the business first by innovating on the experience carefully gathering insights into different customer personalities, behaviours and pain points in order to create innovative services that smooth the way. Like a timeline that helps customers who are easily distracted, taking the stress away and helping them navigate the airport and empowering expert customers who are time poor so that on occasions when things go wrong, our customers are in control. We've automated alternatives to help them on their way so they can take quick action and make the best choice for them. We even piloted baggage credit to save customers fees on overweight bags. But most importantly, we're helping customers get where they need to be in style. This is industry first customer experience, epitomizing British Airways slogan, to fly, to serve. Is it me? Yeah. Am I doing this bit? I thought you were doing this bit. We spent hours practicing this presentation. Um, so, look, we're, we're in a good place, actually. The app is um, it's absolutely loved. And I'm, uh, it, it's great. I'm reasonably new to the business, actually. And to walk into a business where you've already got an app that's kind of at four and a half stars, you've got to kind of work quite hard to keep it there. The work we've done around Timeline in particular has got amazing feedback. I mean, I'm not, I can't give you stats and so on, but um, we are definitely in large double-digit growth from a revenue perspective through app, um, and it is the primary ch um, travel companion for our customers. Um, so super pleased. I mean, there's some of the, so there's some of the, um, the comments that you see. That's, that's my slide. Thank you very much. Cheers. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, guys. Um, 
What, the main question that people wanted to know was how do you actually go about communicating change in a large corporate organization like BA? Um, I guess, uh, how do you, well, you, communicating is different to engaging, I guess. So uh, actually, it's, it's a, again, it's a really interesting organization because it is very traditional in its approach, but it's really embraced things like um, social media platforms. So when we're massive Yammer users, apparently, we're the largest Yammer customer in the world. So people are constantly communicating. Um, so that's, you know, those kind of mechanisms and real social engagement are great. But we're, ultimately, we're going to drive change through doing. Brilliant, excellent. Thank you so much, guys.